Hello, this is Annie, and I am back in the real Pleasant View, finally. I am back in this place. I've been living in the shadow version <laughs> where I created the Machinima for so long that it uh, has been a long time coming, coming back to this Pleasant View, and I'm so excited to be back. <laughs> so I am planning to continue with my university students in the next Let's Play episode. But before I could do that, I needed to create another community lot. And uh, the thing that I was missing was really a uh, library. And that would be a library that also held a study hall or well, a lecture hall, really. So that is what I'm building today. Uh, I had in my mind that it would be like a little bit older, a little bit like um, wooden textures and things like that. But <laughs> once I started building, it became modern, of course, uh, <laughs> like most buildings in Pleasant View already. So this building is quite similar actually to land grab industries in some ways um, and I decided to make it a split level. The main reason for that was that once I loaded the lot I realized that there was uh, a little elevation uh, in the ground uh, at the back of it and rather than flattening the lot I decided to work with it uh, which I find a lot more enjoyable. So I added in um, well basically half the house on the foundation and then the other one on the ground floor. So I'm going to use a lot of staircases in between the levels later to make them accessible. And uh, I also made this sort of um, triangular outcropping above the entrance. And that is uh, something that's very similar to the land grab industries building. So here's going to be a well, sort of a balcony, one could say, above the main um, library part <laughs> where most of the books are and uh, this is of course also the entrance i'm using these beautiful staircases and uh, they will change a little bit later on as well but uh, i really enjoyed that i could uh, make them open so that the steps looked a lot more well modern i guess <laughs> so that's what i did there and um, i kept them white at this point but uh, later on i will change them around a bit and then I took a look at uh, the main layout of the building uh, because I had this like in-between space that I couldn't really use to create separate rooms. So I decided to just leave it open. Uh, so you will be able to see in between the levels later. And I think that that worked a lot better for this kind of uh, building because, well, if I would have created separate rooms here, um, there would have been an empty space in between them and I don't think that I would have liked that as much so yeah that's what I did there instead and here I have decided that I didn't like the railings to be white so <laughs> um, I went ahead and recolored them to start off and uh, yeah I think that looks a lot better actually and here I uh, try to figure out what kind of uh, fence I want to have to, for security, you know. <laughs> we don't want people falling in, uh, in those gaping holes. Um, so I decided to go with these uh, glass ones uh, that uh, well, they create a barrier but they still see through. So I think that that works quite well. And they have that dark uh, color that blends well together with the floor as well. And here I decided to <laughs> go back to the actual first. Uh, wooden texture that was uh, by, by default for the stairs but I still wanted to have the open steps so I kept that and uh, recolored everything once again <laughs> uh, step by step of course and then we're moving on to the general layout of the uh, separate rooms so this big room on the first floor I guess it will be um, is going to be the lecture hall and then I tried to put in a sneaky staircase here in between the levels because I figured that it would be nice for the sims to be able to sort of just walk in between them uh, if they were on that balcony and wanted to go to the top floor but unfortunately I think it was because I made the foundations uh, the foundation just six clicks high I should have made it eight clicks high I think for that to have worked but on the other hand I think I actually prefer the way it uh, turned out <laughs> the looks of it that is um, I don't think it's a huge problem that the seams will have to go downstairs and then up again. And here you can see that we have a cheeky little tree <laughs> poking in through the wall and that is actually from the high school lot next door. So I will have to go into 
Well, I have, will have to wake John Burb up in the middle of the night and send him to his community lot to trim the tree back a bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, that uh, won't be too much work, I think. And here again, uh, putting in more of these huge windows. And yeah, that uh, hole in the roof is something that can happen sometimes when you work with the constraint floor elevation sheet. <laughs> you uh, end up with these random um, dips in the floor. So, but only just putting down more floor tiles will solve that problem. And here I am also having a hard time picking out the um, wall colors. Um, I needed to keep them like one color um, because, well, we ha I have those diagonal pieces of wall where I use the constraint floor relation sheet. Um, so the wall texture will be a bit wonky if I have something like brick, for example. So I started out with this uh, very dull gray color and uh, I didn't quite like it because everything became so flat. In here, I really wanted to have a color, but I wasn't sure which one. So I ended up going with this uh, very nice muted blue and I actually like how that turned out quite a lot. And then of course I wanted to have these beautiful paneled walls <laughs> in here. So I went with a nice creme color that goes well with the staircases as well. And then I wasn't sure about what doors to use. I started with these sort of traditional ones, wooden ones, but I ended up actually going with these very modern glass ones, the same as I used for the entrance as well. Uh, so you will be able to see right into the lecture hall when someone holds a lecture, but <laughs> I think I've actually seen that in real life, so that's no biggie, I think. And then I'm continuing with the outside, as with the most if not all of my community lots, I have put in a parking space because I really, really enjoy having my Sims drive everywhere or be able to drive anyway. But then of course I also put in a lot of bikes here. I think that uh, mainly for uh, school buildings and well, this being a library, I think that bikes add a lot of realism because people that goes to the schools and well, the library too, We'd be very likely to ride a bike, I think. <laughs> and I probably will have most of my sims actually just walk over here. Because of course the university students will be living right next door, so it will just be a quick walk to get to this lot anyway. Um, but it is nice as well to actually have that parking space as well, if I end up wanting to have someone drive here as well. Yes, and uh, I put in a nice fountain up front. I think that added a little bit of character to the whole building. It's nice to have something like that or statues in some cases. And we have two bathrooms. Uh, I decided against going with gendered ones. I don't think that that really matters in a building like this. So there will be one that's uh, easily accessible if you're on a, in a lecture. And then there will be one that's more accessible if you're upstairs. Um, studying on the computer or uh, uh, at the study tables. And here I'm starting on the lecture hall. I'm going to be using Sophie David's opportunity pack, of course, and uh, I put in four different kinds of uh, books. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure that I will be able to only activate one at a time to sort of decide on the go what kind of lecture I want to have. Uh, I hope that works, that's something that I will have to play test, but uh, in theory that's how it will work, I think. <laughs> and then I just put in a lot of chairs. I uh, decided against putting in tables because the Sims won't really be using them anyway, so I just want them to sit and listen to the lecture. Um, I ended up putting the chairs pretty closely together to each other and I hope that they still will work. Uh, that is something that I will have to double check as well when I go to this lot in the next Let's Play episode. And then I added in some little details here. I figured that if someone is going to attend a lecture, they would like to hang up their coat. If it's winter, for example, they would like to uh, not be wearing their outerwear. Um, that's something that I've seen in, in real lecture halls um, in real life as well. So I wanted to have that little detail there. And uh, also some uh, side tables, I think, adds a lot of realism somewhere for all of those books and papers to be stored in between uh, lectures. And then uh, also a little <laughs> nice um, statue of a chicken on top of a chessboard. <laughs> Very cute. 
And uh, then I have this little um, decorative uh, flag, I guess you could call it. I think that's a conversion from The Sims 3, possibly, um, the university pack there. I've used that as well in my, um, both in my elementary school and my high school. Uh, so that's something that I wanted to bring in here as well to sort of mark it as a uh, school, <laughs> I suppose, or a learning place anyway. And yeah, I also added a little desk here for the um, teacher or well, guest lecturer, I guess it would be. Um, so it's, it's not really going to be one teacher, I think, um, that's going to lecture here, but I'm going to have uh, sort of different people from the neighborhood come here and uh, hold some lectures. And then we just have a nice painting here. Uh, that is the first thing you see when you come in and I found a nice one that had a, an owl on it. So <laughs> I thought that that was pretty much perfect for a library. So I added that. And yeah, this is the place that uh, is going to have the most books, really. Uh, this is just stacks and stacks of books. And uh, I added in uh, a nice sofa as well. So uh, this sofa is actually split into a lounge chair and a sofa that you can sort of put together. <laughs> so that looked really nice, I think. So I could uh, use different variations of that. And that is something that I will use upstairs as well. So I added a lot of uh, nice bookshelves here as well, just to sort of fill up the space and make it look like a library, you know? And here I could use the same furniture to tie it all together. And then I wanted to have some sort of study tables here as well. And I wasn't sure about the colors I wanted to use here yet. I went with the light wood and tried to use the same chairs, but I just thought it was too much of the same really. So I went ahead and changed it up a bit with the darker wood colors here for the study tables and the chairs, because I really liked the dark green color of these uh, chairs. They really look like something you would find in a school. <laughs> so looking at everything together, I just thought that it was too much white. Um, so I went ahead and uh, changed all of the bookcases to a light wooden texture instead. I thought that that tied together with the staircases really well. and. Uh, Personally, I think it looks a lot better like that. Uh, it can be become too much white as well, <laughs> actually. Um, and um, I think that mixing a lot of different textures makes things look a lot more realistic often. So here we're moving on to the bathroom, the first one. And um, it's uh, pretty plain, really. Um, I don't really want to put too much stuff in there because it's just going to be like <laughs> A very cl clinical room, um, but just a little sign to tell the Sims to wash their hands, you know, and <laughs> soap dispenser and something to wipe your hands on, and that's enough. And of course, this gorgeous little tree poking in through the <laughs> through the wall, but uh, I will change that later. So we won't have that in the Let's Play episode. And yeah, that's something that I often do as well when I do um, make bathrooms, especially I think. Um, is that I uh, just copy paste things from one to the other because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do it that way, a lot faster. And here we go with uh, the upstairs and uh, my first thought that it was that it would be the computers in that corner but then it just didn't look right to me. I think it was uh, because of the huge windows. I don't think that I would have wanted to work on a computer with uh, the light shining <laughs> on the screen. Um, I think that that might have been it, so <laughs> I decided to put them there instead. And um, I ended up putting in a lot of them. Uh, the space became quite cramped and um, I think that the Sims will still be able to use all of these. Uh, that is something that I will have to double check as well, but uh, it's a very snug. <laughs> but then again, this game keeps su surprising me with what is possible in terms of routing. So especially with chairs actually so um, yeah i wouldn't be surprised if this works perfectly so we will have to see <laughs> that's my theory anyway yes and then we have um, a little place where the sims can buy some snacks as well and uh, i actually found a recolor of the waste paper paper basket that had a little owl on it so <laughs> i was very happy about that um, Yes, and then we have a little corner here that I used to 
well, add in some printers. Um, I figured that it would be nice to have a little detail like that, like you can see uh, in front of you where the students will sort of print the things that they are working on. Um, and some decorations as well. So this is, of course, uh, an entirely decorative corner, but I think that things like this adds a lot of realism and a lot of um, immersion, I guess, into the whole build, if it exists. So, yeah, I like having little things like that. <laughs> and the same thing, of course, with plants. Um, so I added in quite a lot of plants um, in different spaces to sort of fill out the space and make it look a little bit more alive, uh, a little bit less sterile. Um, so we have some on every floor here. And they look really good together, I think, with uh, the, the clean textures and uh, the wood as well. And now we're moving on to my favorite part, putting in all the lights. <laughs> I used these kinds of, um, oh, I'm not sure what they're called, but table lamps that I know that I've seen in like movies <laughs> that features libraries uh, or study halls. Uh, I always see those kinds of lamps, so of course I wanted to have those here as well. So I put in that and um, working with so big spaces, sometimes uh, it's better to use um, spotlights in the ceiling and other times it's better to use wall lights. And I try to stay very conscious about where it was actually um, a ceiling in existence and where I had left it open because I didn't want to end up with spotlights sort of hanging midair from nothing. <laughs> So I, I was a bit luck lucky actually in front of those bookcases because I had ended up putting in that little piece of floor there uh, right above it so I could use the spotlights there. <laughs> but then I tried to do some wall lights on top of the bookshelves and that didn't end up working, unfortunately. <laughs> I liked the idea but yeah, it just didn't look good. But I needed to add in some more lights so I ended up uh, going with some table lamps as well. and. Um, Unfortunately, these were quite big in comparison to the OMSPs, so I would have to <laughs> um, use the camera a lot, uh, turn it down to actually get at the OMSP below the lamps. Um, so sorry about the wonky camera movement here, but uh, yeah, I got the lamps in place finally, so all is well that ends well. And then we only have the lighting for the outside as well. And uh, since there is actually a ceiling above that outside part, I added a spotlight outside as well. And this is the finished library and lecture hall, so I'm really excited to try this out in the next episode. I think it will be really fun to bring the university students here and uh, to try it out with a real lecture. And um, I think it will also be fun to try to go here with uh, some other nerdy sims or perhaps some uh, high school students as well <laughs> to try it out and to utilize it to um, whatever I can come up with. So I hope that you enjoyed this speed build and um, that you liked how it turned out as well. And uh, see you in the Let's Play episode. I really look forward to it and to get back to the Pleasant Year families. Take care. Bye.